So let's talk through every single faction in Warhammer 40k and the miniatures that they either most need updating, gaps within their range that Games Workshop could fill, and any hints or teasers that we've had so far from official channels. Games Workshop does keep new miniature releases for Warhammer 40k coming at a fairly frenetic pace. We tend to get multiple interesting things most months, and have confirmed that at least the first few codexes of 10th edition will all get at least something. We know that things are coming for Dark Angels, Custodes, Tau Orcs and Chaos already. And for quite a lot of factions out there, it's maybe not too hard to guess what Games Workshop might go for in terms of updating them, as and when they eventually get around to them. In this video I thought we'd take a look at some kits that are in desperate need of updates in one way or another, any possibility for completely new miniatures or new units within the range that might work well, perhaps looking at particular things that the community has been wanting for a while now, and then talk about any specific hints that we've had, if any, for certain factions. This video is made with a combination of my own thoughts and a fair few suggestions from you guys on a recent community post on the channel. Thanks to all you guys who came up with good stuff or spotted some obvious things that I've missed. I basically made the slides for this video and then went through and sprinkled in a whole bunch of interesting ideas as I read through the post. Kicking off with the Imperium and the Poster Boys, a lot of the story for the future updates of the Space Marines will no doubt revolve around updating the last of the Firstborn miniatures into Primaris. Games Workshop certainly struck a big blow to that effect in early 10th edition and it feels like they might be trying to complete the job in 11th edition or later. The last holdouts for Firstborn Space Marines will either get updated or just removed, Devastators, Vanguard Veterans and Tactical Squads. Vanguard Veterans may be feeling like the single most likely to definitely get a replacement kit for them. For Devastators and Tactical Squads we do have the Desolation Marines and the Intercessors. I guess it remains to be seen whether Games Workshop will consider the Firstborn equivalents different enough to those. Otherwise the Primary certainly could get things like Artillery and Siege Tanks, reimagined variants of the Vindicator and Whirlwinds, I suspect the Drop Pod and Land Raider are just iconic enough that Games Workshop will just probably redo them when it comes to that. It might be a little bit unclear what actually happens to the Rhino tank. They might reinterpret it on primary sort of scaling. I think it would be a shame for the Space Marines to lose quite such an iconic thing, particularly as there's a life-size one parked outside Warhammer World. Otherwise, for characters to re-sculpt, there's a few conspicuous ones within the core Space Marine Codex, namely Lysander, Pedro Cantor, Cato Sicarius, and Vulcan Estan. They all remained in the book despite some of their resin miniatures actually being out of production. I feel like in due course we probably will see new sculpts for all of those, though not necessarily soon. As for new things to release, they could certainly do a lot more characters if they really wanted to, despite the sense that just about every other faction must have when they see the Emilianth Primaris Lieutenant be released. It is kind of interesting that we actually have big gaps within that still, things like Gravis Lieutenants or Bike Lieutenants. The vast majority seem to have been in Tacticus armour, and he could do the same for Librarians, being reinterpreted with different armour marks or in jump packs. The Loyalist Primarchs are probably coming at some stage, Vulcan, Dawn, Korax and Jagatai Khan. It did seem logical that they might be further down the line than Lehman Ross of the Space Wolves though. And otherwise at the moment we could do with some proper releases of Leviathan things, the Ballistus Dreadnought, the Apothecary Biologist and the Combi Weapon Lieutenant, and the Scouts in their own box set, not just a kill team squad. And as well as characters, it might be interesting to actually do something for the different Loyalist chapters, like say Salamanders, White Scars and Raven Guard. I think it would be really cool if Games Workshop could stretch to giving them one unique data sheet each as well as their character. Something like that might really just help them stand out and be a bit more interesting options compared with the chapters that have loads of units. Otherwise, for actual hints of future releases, I feel like we're probably not going to be getting loads and loads in the imminent future given that they just had a massive release with Leviathan. We have seen Primaris Cato Sicarius in art going back quite a while ago now. He'll probably get redone at some point. We still know that there's going to be a Terminator Captain coming that hasn't been released yet, pictured above. And I guess if you're counting it, then the Infernus Marine Sergeant from the Combat Patrol magazine, he's still to come out yet. Maybe not really a new unit though. On to the Hammer of the Emperor and the Asher Militarum also got a fairly big model release in recent history. Though given the size of their range, there are still a few things that could be good targets for Games Workshop to update. It was kind of surprising that of all things the Kastachan Jungle Fighters didn't get new miniatures when the big update came out. It was all Cadians, and I must admit I wasn't particularly impressed with the look of these guys 20 years ago, let alone the exact same miniatures being on sale now. Otherwise, Resin Rattling seemed like another obvious target for an update. Commissar Yarrick returning would be enjoyed by many. 
after the port of the Death Corps of Krieg into plastic, Death Riders of Krieg also seemed like there'd be another great choice for that, and you could even go further into the Krieg range if you wanted to, with things like their combat engineers or their stormtroopers. Another big thing that's been on the wish list since they went away would be kits for the Lost Regiments, things like the Vostroans, Steel Legion, Valhallans or Mordians. Even if Games Workshop just came out with a similar sort of kill team box for any of those like the Death Corps of Krieg got, that would go a massive long way to making entire armies of them, stretching the parts out and using them for flavour pieces on tank commanders and things. Otherwise, just for a few of many ways that Games Workshop could expand their range, a bike unit I think would be really quite fun. It does seem something that Imperial Guard would probably have access to, given that it feels just very 20th century military, and otherwise could maybe do things like an Imperial fighter of some sort, rather than the more grand attack craft of the Valkyrie, perhaps something like a Thunderbolt or a Lightning. And given that they've recently redesigned the Tauros Venator for the Necromunda system, that one feels like it wouldn't be too bad to port back into the guards to give them another fast attack option. For hints for the future, we have just a couple of little rumour engine hints that came out with Games Workshop's Advent Engine teasers, a minefield marker and the corner of a quite clearly Imperial Guard banner. Not really possible to say exactly what these are based on so little information. I've certainly seen plenty of speculation about new Death Corps of one sort or another. It would be very cool if they wound up being new Death Riders. For the Adeptus Mechanicus, they don't really have any kits that actually need updates given a recent plastic line though one wishlist item that's been going for a long time is getting a few more of the Mechanicum Battle Automata updated for Warhammer 40k and not just 30k. Plenty of these just look very cool indeed and could be treated in a similar sort of way to the Castellan robots. Having more than one similar unit like that might make Big Stompy and Meg a bit more usable. Otherwise, I almost wouldn't really dare to speculate exactly what sort of new units Games Workshop could come up with the ad Meg. They seem to have had a design philosophy that each one must be new, weird and surprising in its own way, whether it's Normandy landing hovercraft, bat-winged bird people, or the stylish new stilt boy that is the Sidonian Scatros. Taking other inspiration from Forge World, you could have a big self-propelled gun like the Ordinatus. I did quite enjoy one piece of art that Games Workshop teased us with from the upcoming Pariah Nexus type book. It showed the Admech going mining for Blackstone, and the mining gear that they had was pretty cool, they had a Tepris variant with a mining laser which was kind of fun, plus some bigger spider walker things that looked kind of similar to that Autonatus, and then a few things hovering around, might have been a spindle drone that bears at least some passing resemblance to the Stratos Automata that you can see here as another heresy era unit. Again that feels like it could be something that's interesting enough to do a hover automata type thing that wouldn't really compete with anything too much within the range. For the Custodes, they're still in a bit of a weird place, being a half plastic and half Forge World resin army in 40k. The plastic stuff already cheap and easy to get a hold of, the resin stuff enormously expensive. It does kind of feel like they're playing with sort of half an army if you don't take the Forge World type things. Their Contempt of Dreadnoughts, the Telemon Heavy Dreadnoughts and the Caladius tank would all be excellent choices for a port to plastic when Games Workshop get round to it. I feel like the way that they're treated with respect to Horus Heresy might mean that they might be in danger of getting a release for that setting instead, and for some reason Games Workshop seem to have a bit of a design maxim of trying to keep the settings as separate as possible, even when it might not necessarily make sense to. If they wanted to further develop the talents of the Emperor, they could do other things for the Sister of Silence as well, perhaps the unique transport thing that they have, that Caron Acquisitor, another 30k resin kit that could be made 40k in some form. The Custodes Codex will be out in the not too distant future here, and we did get that model teaser just before the new year with this shadowy teaser of a shield and melter spear custodian. He's got really quite a stylish head crest that might well mark him out as a unique character. Not impossible, it could be an entirely new variant of a squad of these guys though. For the Adeptus Aurorotus, for a relatively new plastic range, they have a lot of things that have been realised quite well. Really quite an extensive model force now. For the most part I'd say their miniatures are really quite nice, currently I just feel like they need their rules tweaking so some of their more iconic things are a bit more used in game perhaps. For actual miniature releases it's easy to point to the fine cast resin type things within the army, things like crusaders, death cult assassins or ministorum priests. I guess they could be redone in bigger squads in a similar sort of way to those arco flagellants, though I feel like they might not be the most exciting things to the average sisters player perhaps not feeling quite as core to the army as the girls in power armour. I guess looking down other 40k tropes, sisters neither have a flyer nor a mounted unit yet, 
Maybe they could have some sort of similar release to what the Admet got when they got their Cerberus Riders and the Archaeopters. I guess they're probably likely to have at least something new coming in summer. Their codex is out then. It could just be a minor character release or something a little bit less exciting though. I guess we'll wait and see. Next up we've got the Imperial Knights. They have their three major chassis of knights with the Questorus, Dominus and Armagus. Maybe just taking some inspiration for the Chaos Knight range. It feels like they could maybe give the Armagers a few more options and data sheets. With the latest Chaos Knight kit for those, they've got the option to field basically dedicated close combat ones and getting the option for chain cannons on them. It definitely doesn't seem impossible that they could choose to expand the Armager kit a bit further in that kind of way. Otherwise, I guess we've had some Forge World Knights port to plastic, though it seems more in motivation to flash them out for their heresy line than the 40k one. I guess we've still got the Atropos Knight, the Armager Moirax, and the enormous Acasta chassis that you could realise in plastic if they really wanted to. It would just be really nice to see the Serastus Knights be treated as part of the core knight range and just expand it in that way, rather than being always awkwardly locked into the Imperial Armour downloads for 40k and just treated as a bit of a peripheral side option as a result. Otherwise, for more out there ideas, just in the law of the Imperial Knights, they do tend to have serfs and servants on their night worlds. It will be a big change for the overall theme for the army, but you could genuinely release some actual infantry units to do some of the boring stuff like hold objectives and do more grunt work to support their noble peers. I can't help but think of some sort of fantasy musketeer type units reimagined 40k style. Otherwise, I guess there'd be absolutely nothing to stop them from just making some sort of other chassis of knights. Maybe some sort of Psychotype Knight could be another thing that they could borrow off the Chaos. They do have their Abominance. So maybe some sort of Imperial Seer or Psychic Knight could be coming at some stage in the future. For the Grey Knights, they got just quite a big release in the distant past with their Terminators, Dread Knight and Stripe Marines, and then very little since. Now arguably both with Standard Space Marines going primary scale, and now the new Terminators being updated, you could pretty much look at just about every single miniature in the Grey Knight range and say that it could probably do with an update now. The only recent miniature on the newer scaling is Castell and Crow, I believe. He's in Firstborn armour but has the same sort of scaling as Primaris. It does feel that just inevitably Games Workshop will eventually get around to redoing the Grey Knights, and they'll probably do it as a big all-in-one go sort of release similar to how they did the Black Templars. The Grey Knight range is kind of small, it could just literally do it with three plastic kits for the Terminators, Stripe Marines and the Dread Knight, and then a bunch of individual character sculpts. The Dread Knight I feel is generally considered to be a miniature that a lot of people might not mind Games Workshop quite radically redesigning if they wanted to. Not that some people don't have a fair bit of fondness for the trusty baby carrier. And otherwise, while they're still waiting for a big swoop of an update, if they did want to throw them a bone with another individual character release, they could maybe update Brother Captain Stern, as his miniature was particularly old and dated. I feel like anything particularly new out there and creative will probably take a backseat to the overall range refresh, but other things that might be nice to have would be actual unique Grey Knight themed miniatures for their HQ range, rather than just borrowing the ones from the Space Marine line. The Knights of Titan do have their own style really. And perhaps a unique Grey Knight Dreadnought could be pretty nice as well. Something on a Redemptor kind of scaling would be rather cool. For the Agents of the Imperium, actually the majority of them are at least reasonably recent plastic kits. Just a few resin relics hiding amongst them. Inquisitor Kotiaz and Karamazov stand out. They're both are pretty iconic sculpts. Otherwise just a good generic Inquisitor kit with a whole load of options would be welcomed really well I think. Kind of a shame that that didn't come out with the Inquisitorial Henchman unit that they had. And you could redo Forge World Inquisitors such as Solomon Locke, but again probably secondary to the above. There's all sorts of peripheral Imperial organisations out there as well. We've had things like the RBTs, Rogue Traders and the Navy Breachers all done for Kill Team at one time or another. And there's plenty more things that they could dig into there. Inquisitorial Stormtroopers could be one. If they wanted to, they could maybe reimagine the Legion of the Damned. The sinister spectral space marines that appear out of nowhere to help in fights on Bidden. For what's actually likely, I put my first guess on Kotiaz. He did specifically feature in the end sequence of the Arcs of Omen narrative, which sounded like it was a teaser for him featuring in some sort of future narrative, and maybe if there's some sort of grand campaign towards the end of 10th edition, that might be the time to look out for him. Finally, for the Imperium, we've got the Divergent Space Marine chapters. 
many of them perhaps primarily being a whole load of firstborn miniatures that are likely to get superseded by primaries in one form or another, though some miniatures might be cut. The Space Wars perhaps feel like they have the single most to lose from there, lots of unique firstborn squads of one sort or another. Grey Hunters, Blood Claws, Wolfguard, Wolfguard Terminators, Long Fangs and a few more. Maybe feels like some of them could be made to work with upgrade sprues with some existing Primaris kits, if the upgrade sprues were generous enough, or maybe just have some sort of flexible Primaris Space Wolf kits that can represent multiple of these. Otherwise Wolfren and Thunderwolves I guess are both technically firstborn as well. I personally can't help but think that, that they might do better with Wolfen if they had a second go at the sculpts of those, maybe making them a bit more menacing and mighty perhaps. And then the Space Wolves have a particularly impressive cast of characters, so far we've only had Ragnar Blackmane redone as a Primaris, it'd be cool to see a new reinterpretation of as many of the rest as possible. I feel like the big one that would probably cause the most excitement though would probably be Lehman Ross himself appearing. It seems odds on to be the next loyalist Primarch given that Lionel Johnson came back for the Dark Angels and that would only leave Lehman Ross as head of the major divergent chapter that's got an entire range. I feel like it would be a bit of a strange choice if anyone other than him was next online. Hopefully whenever they do get their updates they don't lose too many unique units. I can't help but think that Games Workshop probably isn't going to replace literally every single bit of the very extensive Space Wolf range when it happens. There could be a bit of a reckoning there maybe. For the Blood Angels it's kind of a similar story, though I feel like their list of units is a lot shorter that would need a refresh. Just doing Sanguinary Guard and Death Company would go a long way. And then a few unique character sculpts such as Lamartes, Astarath, maybe a Sanguinary Priest. My guess is that Tycho might not well get one given that he has been fluffed dead in the law for a long time. Perhaps one of the potential most interesting ones could be a re-sculpt of the Sanguinor. In theory he's the manifestation of the chapters yearning for Sanguinius back. And if they decided to re-sculpt him on a sort of Primark kind of scale, it could be rather spectacular. A ghostly not sanguineous to return to 40k could be kind of fun. Their unique Dreadnoughts and the Bile Predators seem just a little bit less hopeful to be ported over directly. Perhaps particularly given the Brutalis seems to have stolen the thunder of the Furioso Dreadnought maybe. Perhaps they could have an upgrade sprue to give a Gladiator Reaper the option of a Flamestorm Cannon. That would be rather fun. For the Dark Angels, at time of recording we've seen a fair bit of what Games Workshop has coming for them, but things besides what they've actually mentioned and shown, there are quite a few things left. We certainly might have some more characters on the way, and maybe out of those, Samael and Ezekiel are perhaps the biggest characters that haven't had new miniatures shown off yet. So far we've seen Belial and Asmodai. Otherwise, with standard-sized Space Marine bikers going away and giving way to the Outriders, it feels like they might get an Outrider-sized replacement for the Ravenwing Black Knights and maybe the Ravenwing Command Squad at some stage. And I guess they do have plenty more miniatures in their range, though I feel like maybe the Landspeed of Vengeance and the Ravenwing Flyers maybe aren't as urgent for updates, as the scaling doesn't really matter quite so much versus Primaris in my opinion. A return of the Deathwing Command Squad would be nice, but we've basically just had them confirm that they're going away in the meantime, instead replaced by an upgrade sprue for the standard Terminator Squad. Otherwise, if they go down the same sort of route as the Black Templars do with a miniature update, if they were going to go for some generic characters, we could get a generic Company Master in the same sort of way as the Black Templars got their Marshal, or maybe an Interrogator Chaplain. They feel like two choices that you might not necessarily even need to have individual data sheets for them or anything, but they could just follow the same ones in the Core Space Marine book and have some nice Dark Angel style flavour. Otherwise, we already have a fair few things incoming Deathwing Knights, Inner Circle Companions, the Dark Angels upgrade sprue for the regular Terminators, and Belial and Asmodai. It'll be interesting to see how many of the above gets added to these ones by the time the Dark Angels launch actually comes around. For the Black Templars, out of the Divergent chapters they feel like the least obvious for what they do next with them. They had really quite a complete and extensive range update, with all their most famous units getting new Primaris sculpts back in 9th edition. I feel like as a result it's kind of unlikely that they get too many new releases in the near future, particularly with the other Divergent chapters to redo, like Blood Angels and Space Wolves. Currently if you want to build Firstborn Crusader squads, then currently they're waiting for the release of the new Scaling Scouts as an individual kit, which you can't buy yet. Though it seems that kind of likely whenever they get their 10th edition updates, they're probably just going to be a goner as an option outright. Otherwise, if they did want to give them some other minor releases, maybe something like a Templar Chaplain model could be good fun, given how present they are in the lore, even if they do have Grimaldus here as their own unique one. Otherwise, maybe a themed Terminator unit could be quite nice for them. 
will be interesting to see the Black Templars take on something like Deathwing Knights. Finally, for the Divergent chapters and the Imperium, there's the Death Watch. They feel like they're basically in the same place as the Grey Knights at the moment, essentially waiting for a range refresh, though they don't really have that many models on sale at the moment for the Death Watch. The Watchmaster, the Death Watch veterans, and the Corvus Blackstar are basically their entire range. Wouldn't really be the biggest release in the world to update that all to primary scaling in one way or another. Again, the Corvus probably wouldn't even really need an update, to be honest. I can't help but think it'd be kind of appropriate if it actually came out with a Kill Team release tying in with that game system. It'd be very appropriate with the name, if nothing else. And I feel like they're a faction that could really use something like the Black Templars or the Dark Angel-style upgrade sprues that they came out with. And he had a whole load of more extensive shoulder pad options and themed bits and extra weapon options that could be spread a bit more widely throughout the rest of the faction. It's been nice to have something that's geared towards making a say like Spectrus or Indomitor kill teams actually with a bit more theme. Into the Forces of Chaos and the Chaos Space Marines definitely have a lot of potential targets for updated kits or new releases at some stage. Just within the core range of the faction, perhaps some of the most standout are the Chaos Bikers, which date back a serious amount of time now. I believe that those kits are over 20 years old, and otherwise for seriously old stuff that could do with an update at some stage. Lucius the Eternal and Noise Marines really stand out, with miniatures that are either out of production or nowhere near fit for purpose, though I guess they'll come with an Emperor's Children Codex. Otherwise, the Defiler stands out as maybe a model that's showing its age a bit, definitely dating from a previous era of Warhammer 40k. Still pretty cool and iconic looking in my opinion though. And for other possibilities of remade minis, actually having an exalted champion to be part of the core range again would be quite nice. It'd be really good to see actual model representation for the Fallen Dark Angels, which have been a force in the lore for really quite a long time, and kind of yo-yoed one way or the other with rules support. I guess eventually we'll probably get a model for Luther, the leader of them, given that he is a force that's active in the lore at the moment. It'll be quite fun to have a mini-release alongside some Fallen Dark Angels there. Otherwise, I guess they could revisit some of the things that they hacked out in the last Chaos Codex, the mutilators just went away with no replacement, which I can't really blame Games Workshop for too much given that the models really weren't my favourite. But it would be fun to see them remade, maybe a bit more with the style of the newer obliterators. You could even have it as an actual proper multi-part plastic kit for obliterators slash mutilators. I'm sure that that will be well welcomed. Finally, for perhaps more obvious stuff, a Chaos Lord with a jump pack to get redesigned and lead those raptors into battle would make the Night Lord players quite happy. He was perhaps one of the single most lamented models to be going away last time when he had a resin miniature on sale and then it just went out of production and then lost rule support in the last book. It feels like there's maybe enough targets there that they don't need to go fishing around too much for entirely new units to add to the range. I feel like maybe a next thing on the wish list might be to have at least just one character per core legion, much in the same way as Space Marines each have their own primaris character model. It'd be pretty cool if, say, Night Lords... Iron Warriors or Alpha Legion could at least just have one character in their own 40k styling and not just in heresy sort of support. It'd go a long way to adding a bit of flavour to those individual armies. Otherwise, definitely possible that we'll see the Undivided Primarchs come back at some stage, Perturabo, Lorgar or Alpharius. The first two are known to be alive and active in the 40k setting, so I'm sure they'll come back at some stage, and you've kind of got to know that Alpharius has survived in some sort of nefarious manner. It'd be far more surprised if he was confirmed to be actually dead. The hints for the future, I believe that Chaos Bikers were part of a really quite big previous rumour compilation where literally everything else came true bar them. That was one big rumour dump that talked about things like the Accursed Cultists, Chosen and Warpsmith before they came out. Given how much the rest of that league got right, it seems likely that Chaos Bikers will be on their way at some point, particularly given that they're pretty much the next most logical choice. For the Divergent Chaos Legions, the Death Guard are by far the best supported out of any of them, given that they had their time as the focal faction for 8th edition Warhammer 40k, and got a much more expanded range than Thousand Sons or World Eaters have so far at the moment. Perhaps on the wish list for them it is some sort of Death Guard Possessed. They were a unit that Games Workshop initially gave them access to, but then decided to take them away when they redid the Possessed models for some reason. Maybe at some point the Death Guard might be in for their own version of Death Guard 8-bound, though I'm sure a lot more slow, purposeful and gribbly. A Power Armoured Lord might not be the worst choice in the world as well, given that they can field them, but are locked to the generic HQ models for the Chaos Space Marines, and otherwise I feel like another couple of reboxings might go down quite well. 
having the play Marines actually being able to be bought at the full squad of 10 for the cost rather than being a bit shortchanged and getting the fluffy number of 7. Definitely a very appropriate number for Nurgle Sons, but given that you pay very similar costs to the 10-man box set, it also makes them more expensive to acquire. The Combat Patrol being redesigned slightly to swap out some Pox Walkers for something of just about anything else, maybe some Terminators might be quite nice, and otherwise for suggestions for what sort of things could actually come that's new for the Death Guard, maybe trying to fill out a few more of the choices within the classic Chaos Space Marine roster might be fun. I don't really see why they couldn't have something like a Death Guard Havoc style squad, maybe packing a whole bunch of Blight launchers, or even Death Guard Jump Pack Raptor style units. It was something that they were able to field in Codex Space Marines. For the Thousand Suns, their range is a lot less supported than the Death Guard, and kind of reliant on a bunch of kits that were ported from Fantasy. Maybe the most obvious thing that they might like is a bit more choice for the core of the army, if you want to field the actual standard battle line of the Thousand Sons, you basically just have the choice between the Rubric Marines and the Scarab Occult Terminators. It's kind of weird that you've got more unit choice with things like the Zangor, Spawn and Chaos Cultists, things that aren't actual dusty space marines of the Legion. Again, I suppose you could do something like Rubric Havocs, having something like those Warp Fire Missiles, Soul Reaper Cannons or something completely new, or perhaps some sort of more armoured melee focus units, Maybe some sort of Egyptian style spearmen or something like that. Otherwise, a Psycho Dreadnought could be fun. Redo one rubric style as opposed to the more warped hell brute that they have. And he could go down the demon engine route, much like the Death Guard have. Or be interesting to see a take on some sort of demon engine of Zinch. Again, like the Death Guard, I'm sure they'd have the redo of the combat patrol maybe high on the wish list for some. Swapping out some Zangors for some rubrics, perhaps. It'd be nice just to slant the balance a bit more towards the actual Space Marines. For the World Eaters, when they came out, it felt like they released with about half of their intended model range. As a result, their entire unique army is only serviced by six unique plastic kits plus generic Chaos Space Marine stuff. And there are some really obvious things in that that they definitely could develop if they wanted to. A Lord on Foot seems like a really strange oversight, particularly given you'd expect one to be able to lead the standard Corn Berserkers into battle. Some sort of demon engine of corn, similar to the Blood Slaughterer, perhaps, and perhaps a fearsome 40k take on the Red Butcher's Terminators or similar. That was something that a lot of people were taking as a given when their World Eaters Codex came out the first time round, but it turns out they didn't show up. It would be a bit odd not to do something like that, given that both Death Guard and Thousand Suns got a unique Terminator unit. Otherwise, as I mentioned in a previous video, there were a few teasers as to what we could expect next for the favoured servants of Korn. We got a Juggernaut Mounted Lord, and it seems very likely that we'll get Juggernaut Mounted Berserkers to back that up as a fast attack choice for the army. There even appear to be some of those pictured in art following on behind Lord Invocatus, and a Berserker Surgeon was something that was just repeatedly made reference to with the creation of 8 bound and keeping the Butcher's Nails functioning. So when they get their next wave in 10th edition, it seems highly likely they'll be getting it some sort of depraved world eaters doctor. Beyond the Space Marines for Chaos, Chaos Knights are maybe another army that is not entirely clear which way Games Workshop might go with them next. Between all the options that they can build for their abhorrent and their war dog pattern knights, they feel like they have both of those niches covered really quite well right now, so I guess they'd likely to be looking at something else. No idea which way they might go with these, I guess a few possibilities could be an actual proper Chaos version of the Knight Tyrant, that at the moment you just use the Dominus Pattern Knight for, maybe actual Chaos Sculpted Serastas Pattern Knights, but given that they're not really part of the core Imperial and Chaos Knight Codexes to start with now, maybe that's a bit less likely. There's nothing to stop them just dreaming up an entire new different class of Knight in some other way, maybe something midway between a Wardog or Questorus. Well, I guess if they did want to push out the abhorrent style knights, they could expand it with maybe giving it a named character knight option. The Imperials do have Canis Rex, I suppose. I guess if Games Workshop ever did decide to go down the route of making them not just an army of super heavy walkers and gave them some night world vassals to do their bidding on an infantry sort of scale, it'd probably make sense to have some of them available for both knightly factions. No doubt some twisted bonded cultists to serve the Chaos Masters to be a counterpart of Imperial Knightly Militias on foot. Finally for Chaos, we have the Chaos Demons. Their range is really quite big and have a pretty crazy amount of character datasheet options on offer, and a few of those have become really quite dated miniatures or are still locked to fine cast resin. 
things like the Blue Scribes, the Epidemius, Trance Weaver, the Herald on Juggernaut, or the Floxmaster. Any of those getting a plastic re-sculpt would probably be quite nice. Otherwise, I feel like the actual standard lesser demons maybe aren't holding up quite as well as some, though I feel like they're kind of fine for slightly hoardy infantry units. The Spoilpot Scriven a miniature is out of production for some reason, despite having a very weird but kind of fun model. And for actually adding a unit back into the Codex in full, they could do a reimagination of the Furies of Chaos, the winged beastie type things that used to be flitting around the peripheries of the army. They often tended to be quite a nice cheap outrider type units. It was kind of weird that they got removed at the time, given that it was a similar sort of timing to releasing some very good Fury-style models for Warcry, I seem to remember. If they wanted to try and make them a little bit more 40k relevant, perhaps with Vashtor around, they could hash out something different along the same sort of theme as the Soul Grinder. Perhaps actually try and bring a bit more heretical technology into the Demon's arsenal, as opposed to their more fantasy-style warp spawn. Onto the Eldari, and despite having a really quite big release in 9th edition, they're perhaps still one of the races that need the most love out of Games Workshop, still having perhaps a surprising amount of kits that date back to either the 90s or the very early 2000s, and maybe most notably the remaining aspects, Swooping Hawks, Warp Spiders, and Fire Dragons, with Striking Scorpions going to be out for individual release in the not too distant future, now their kill team set dropped. Their Phoenix Lord counterparts are in the same sort of boat as well, the majority of those are out of production currently, not even being able to be added to the army, which is kind of a sorry state for Kane's Chosen. There's still some other fine cast characters beyond that, such as Prince Iriel or Illic, and even out of some of their wider units, things like the Falcon Grav Tank and the Viper are really quite old kits now. I'd say compared with quite a lot of others in 40k, they're maybe holding up and don't really look too bad for their age. Slightly more dated kits from much earlier in 40k's history maybe shows up a little bit better on infantry units perhaps. Again they do feel like one of the factions where just the sheer amount of things to update maybe overshadows new units for the army. Though I guess it didn't stop them from bringing out the Shroud Runners jet bikes when they had last had their major release. For other options they could perhaps bring back the Bone Singer from Dawn of War as the Eldari construction units for that game. They did have a previous model, but it wasn't added as a permanent addition to the range. You could perhaps expand the Corsairs a bit more, maybe taking some inspiration from four to old units that they were going to have when it seemed like they were on the cusp of getting a more complete army. You could go down some sort of Exodite style route, maybe at least release one unit for the Exodites like the Corsairs got with their Void Reavers. And if they wanted to release another big centerpiece for the army, perhaps a super heavy grav tank of some mark, Similar to the Forge World ones that they have on offer, could be fun. Perhaps the Eldari equivalent of an Imperial Guard Baneblade. Out of literally any of the armies though, it feels like the Drukhari are in the single most dire need of new updated kits. Not only do they have some more niche resin characters out of production, they actually have really quite core battle line units out of production that were made of resin. The Grotesques, the Mandrakes, the Court of the Archon, and the Beastmaster and Beast Packs. Though some of those miniatures had their perks, I feel like all the offerings of them kind of sucked in their own way. Most of them being just vastly expensive if you wanted to put an entire unit together of them, say the Grotesques only coming in a very expensive Monopose finecast model, and the Mandrakes had their issues with their scythe blades just not really being cast very well. Yurin and Rakath would also be good for re to return one of their unique characters that got taken away, it's not like they have many. And supposedly there were some rumours about the Mandrakes getting a kill team at some stage. For adding new things to the army though, I feel like if they filled these gaps, they would go back to having at least a fairly well-rounded range compared with some factions out there in the game. I feel like if you ask Drukhari players what would be on their wish list for the vast majority of them, it would probably be a new version of Astra Bale Vex, the sinister and shadowy Lord of Kamora. It would be a pretty fitting centerpiece for the faction given that Games Workshop do really quite like their big centerpiece models these days. No doubt resplendent on his custom raider, the Days of Destruction. For the Tyranids, they just had their major range update. There were a whole load of things within their model range that were kind of expected to have updates. Things like the Termagants, Gene Stealers, and Hormagaunts all had some model issues. And the worst of the fine cast things like Pyrovores and Biovores, they got updates as well. Maybe out of their older miniatures, perhaps Gargoyle stand out as one of the most that might like to join the other Gaunts with re-sculpted miniatures. They've generally had a bit of an awkward feel on those flying bases. Perhaps could be one of the options for next time they get a big launch. 
Otherwise, for new units or other potential things from the faction's lore past, Shrikes were one thing that seemed like they could be on the cards for a new army release but didn't turn up. We got the Winged Prime miniature, but unfortunately is either leading warriors on foot or gargoyles. He doesn't have any counterparts to fly into battle with. The Doom of Malantai and the Red will be a couple of options for kind of pseudo-character data sheets for the Tyranids. The Red Terror could lead some Ravagers, perhaps, and the Doom of Malantai could maybe go back to be a Zonethrope style leader. Now the Neurothrope has just become part of the unit once more. In spite of the release of the really quite big and impressive Norn Emissary and Norn Assimilator, Games Workshop didn't quite give Tyranids a proper super heavy Titanic style unit in plastic yet. That still definitely is a role that they could add in for the army. It would be pretty awesome to see basically a knight-sized Tyranid crawling its way across the board to destroy and process the enemy army. For the Gene Stealer Colts, they've got quite a well-rounded range already, given that they're quite a recently established faction. Games Workshop have gone very, very heavy on the character releases for the army, and if anything, maybe feel a bit overrepresented for characters to things now. I'd guess they probably won't get as many big releases too soon compared with other factions, though I'm sure they could push out their tropes way further if they really wanted to. I'm sure there'd be plenty of scope for crowbarring in other size shapes of mutants and freaks, maybe a unit of those little familiar type things that they often have, or even units of similar sort of mutations but fielded with different war gear in a different way. They could do things like jump infantry or something with exosuits perhaps. Otherwise, loads of options for mining gear equipment, could have something similar to the Hades Breaching Drill, or something like the return of that Tectonic Frag Drill that had rules in previous editions. Or if they wanted to try and reinterpret a bit of nostalgia from the distant past of the faction, they could perhaps try and reimagine their battle limo type thing. Not sure how they'd try and make that just a little bit more sensible to bring it up to date for more contemporary 40k. Maybe make it into some sort of battle pulpit for a demagogue leader perhaps. For the Necrons, they had their huge release in Warhammer 40k 9th edition, being the antagonist faction there, though despite the absolutely enormous influx of reimagined or just entirely new units, there's still quite a lot left for them to update. Basically just take anything in their range that is either a fine cast resin miniature or is an older miniature that has the green rod style, and perhaps particularly things that they're bothered to keep in the codex, indicating that they maybe have a bit more of a future than other things. The Locust Destroyers and the Locust Lord feel like they'll be inevitable at some point. They redid really the Locust Heavy Destroyer and they could just very easily do the standard ones in the same style as that. I'm pretty sure that they will do that at some point and it's just a matter of time. Maybe the things I'd really be interested to see though would be the new and reimagined versions of the Nightbringer and the Deceiver. It would be really cool to see some of the other Catan get the Void Dragon treatment as I really thought that he was a pretty spectacular centerpiece model for the faction and the other smaller resin Catan must be looking on in envy. Trazen the Infinite is also sort of conspicuous by the fact that he stayed around in the Codex, when a bunch of other resin characters were removed, like the standard Necron Lord, Zandrek, Oberon, and Anrakir. That feels like he is kind of likely to get a new miniature at some stage, particularly as they redid Oricon. He is probably the single best known Necron character from the lore, given his meddling around with other races and other war zones, perhaps even more so than the Silent King and Imitek. Otherwise, if you did keep on going down the Necron HQ sort of focus, you could maybe do characters to lead either the Flayed Ones or the Triarch Praetorians, maybe a Flare King miniature, basically a Lord for the Flayed Ones, and a few of them have their own characteristics and rule many kingdoms of their depraved brothers, or perhaps some sort of Enforcer leader for the Triarch Praetorians to give the curious jump pack Necrons something to bound across the board into battle with. For the Tau, they're going to be getting their codex in the not too distant future, so should be able to expect some new models at least. As it has been for a while, it feels like the biggest thing that they're lacking is an update on their alien auxiliaries. Aside from those new Farstalker style miniatures, pretty much all the rest of the crew and Vespid are in dire need of an update. Maybe particularly the Shaper, Crutox and the Vespid miniatures even more so than the plastics. They could well revisit things like Forge World options like the Greater Narlock that featured in Dawn of War. It does seem that they're going to be getting some sort of Crutes flavoured cavalry at least. Otherwise, for the Ethereals, both Ornvar and Ornshi are both fine cast miniatures that could be fun to have reinterpreted. Sniper drones are also in resin and have never had a particularly strong kit in my opinion. Would be nice to have a plastic sculpt there. 
and actually a whole bunch of the Tau Empire army range just in general is actually surprisingly dated. It maybe just doesn't quite show it as much given that these sculpts are all going for really quite futuristic things and I think generally hold up well. Units like the Tau Hammerhead and Stealth Suits really do date back really quite a long time now. They maybe don't feel quite as critical for updates just yet. Otherwise you could definitely dig into their Forge World options, things like Tetras, the Hazard Suits, Maybe the other Riptide variants could be interesting, either something just like a direct re-sculpt in plastic, or something a bit more analogous, but not quite the same miniature. For new units that they haven't had before, you could maybe have some miniatures to represent the 8 for the Farsight Enclaves. I feel like that might be a bit of a tricky one, given that they're basically 8 different battlesuit commanders, one of which is a Riptide, so realistically you're never going to be getting them all in one kit. Maybe you could give them some options in an upgrade sprue though that could do for upgrading a bunch of other miniatures to represent them though. One of the most common things on the Tower of Wishlist might be something with things like fusion blades, so an actual close combat battlesuit unit as much as it goes against the whole Tau meme and ethos. People are just kind of inspired by Farsight's doing close combat but Tau. I'm sure people would love to have some battlesuits to back him up. Otherwise, perhaps some human auxiliaries could be an interesting thing that's long been part of Tau lore, though maybe a little bit more on the periphery. Having another auxiliary species of any sort could really feel that they're fighting as a bit more of a coalition rather than mainly Tau with a couple of things tacked on. And I guess we also have this store anniversary ethereal miniature coming fairly soon. That'll be available this year in Warhammer stores. The fun ethereal with the little incense jar type thing to represent the different flavours of the invocation of the elements. Otherwise, with the actual codex, Games Workshop do seem to be hinting that crews are going to be redone in style. We've seen a rumour engine that looks like a Crutox Crut gun, and then we've got this cavalry miniature tease that isn't a Crutox but looks like it's something that's related to a Narlock that might be a completely different BC that this guy's mounted on. Not sure if that actually updates the battle line crew or just use the more standard weapons from the Farstalker Kim band for that. I'd be surprised if they redo Crute in a focused way and don't give them a shape or character type model. That could even be what this is for all we know. For the Orcs and for one of 40k's biggest and most creative factions, there really do seem to be a pretty big amount of possibilities that they could go for and people would absolutely love. For remade miniatures, the tank busters really stick out as being one of the last holdouts of Orc Finecast Resin. A fairly sad kick compared with a few of the other things that they have out at the moment. The sculpts are kind of interesting, but they really do harken back to a long time in the Orcs past, and the Lock Squad war gear doesn't help them out too much. Otherwise, plenty of Finecast characters that could do with an update. Captain Badrock, Mad Dog, Grotznik, and Zagstruck, for ones. Would be a shame to see them just completely fall by the wayside. I don't know whether it would actually happen or not, but a boy's kit that's more fit for purpose will be quite nice. The new one does have really quite a nice feel to it, with big chunky boys that look really quite dangerous. But then they did feel like they kind of made a sort of half effort with it, and didn't actually allow you to field entire units that were either shooters or choppers, which feels like it should have been the bare minimum really. Seems like it might just be doubling up on efforts to try and remake that in such a way that it allows you to get the full unit out of it, and I'm not sure how likely it is realistically. Otherwise, again, plenty of inspiration that they could take from Forge World. I feel like an actual plastic squiggoth to go alongside their beast naggers will be really quite popular, probably more so than the feel of the kill rig overall, perhaps. It's just a bit more iconic and recognisable. You could do a new Chinook Warcopter, which was a fun one that got retired. And perhaps some of the other most fun Forge World miniatures that people seem to have a real love for are the Grot Tanks. Little mini Grot Tanks and almost mini Battleship type things. This would be the equivalent of super light vehicles for other races. But to the Gretchen they must feel like big powerful battle tanks in Ds. Otherwise for perhaps more genuinely new stuff, Beast Snaggers do feel like they could have a few more fun possibilities. Maybe some kind of Squig Herders or Winged Beastie. Actually getting to have one full character per clan would be quite good. Fingers crossed that this very snazzy Bad Moon's war boss sticks around so they can have a bit more representation. And then I guess that would mainly leave the evil sons as uncovered. A unique biker character like Wasdaka Gotsmek could be really quite good for that. I also feel like they really could just go back to basics a bit and release an actual looted tank kit. This again just feels like it's something that's absolutely classic for orky lore but just doesn't really seem to get model representation. Literally make something that's roughly similar to a Lehman Ross and have the kit be made with a whole bunch of orky glyphs and spiky bits all over it. 
It'd be really fun to actually have some weapon sprues with the choices between different factions' weapons and guns, and have them just all cobbled together by the imaginations of the mechs. The Orc Codex isn't too far away, as we know, and for Games Workshop's early reveals for them, we've had some sort of mech boss type thing teased. This thing looks absolutely mad with bits of orky big gun, big mecha cyborg leg type things, a mechy sort of boss pole and what looks like a teleport sort of generator on its back. This guy looks almost certainly to be a character. Maybe it will basically be a mech version of a war boss, perhaps. Though it certainly could be a named character. Perhaps could fit in with something Death Skulls, perhaps. Or represent other famous orky mechs. Maybe the shadowy Orchimedes of Armageddon. Finally, for another one of 40k's newest factions, we've got the Leagues of Votan. A small range at the moment, though it feels like there's certainly more on the way. I think most people are expecting their 10th edition codex when it comes to come with really quite a good expansion for the army. Perhaps with armies like Sister Battle being a bit of a template for how they might roll out and get another medium sized wave of kits to expand the faction next time round. Perhaps the single most likely seems like Jump Infantry as seen by the Kill Team kit with this one specialist within the unit. This guy had a plasma axe and a bolt pistol. A Jump Melee squad seems like it would fit in with the rest of the army quite well. Also, from their last time Codex cover artwork, we had these flyers hovering around in the background. Might just be a little bit of backy artwork, but definitely could be a miniature that's coming for the faction in the future. Games Workshop certainly like to put little Easter eggs in their artwork for future releases for an army. Otherwise, it feels like an exosuited type walker thing would really fit quite well with the faction in some form. Again, I'd probably see that more of a surprise if they didn't get a walker type unit at some point, more so than if they did. And finally, I feel like they're perhaps lacking maybe a big centerpiece leader type miniature that the vast majority of other factions seem to get these days. Not entirely sure what they might come up with for the kin for that, but a big centerpiece leader or super heavy or something could certainly be a fun addition. In any case, let me know what your thoughts are on what miniature should come for your faction next. What does your faction's 40k range need most? Or do you have any other fun ideas for new units to add to the range? As always, look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. In any case, hope you've enjoyed just a few thoughts about some potential possible things, maybe some things that could need updates, and any hints of the future that we might have. We'll be interested to see if Games Workshop deliver on any of these, or just surprise us with some completely new stuff for the armies. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying the channel's videos, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.